Hi everyone. Hello. Uh, my name Hello. is Yes, my name is Auntie Mimi. I'm here today. Uh, we are live. I have with me uh, a panel and we are discussing today. Our discussion is stemming from the book that was written by Clive Mono Mukundu, a renowned author, uh, a musician, a producer, and an instrumentalist. Uh, he's written a book that has made us to think about a lot of things. And today we are going to be discussing some of the issues that have been raised. Uh, on the panel here with me, we've got uh, Mr. Mono Mukundu himself, who is with us on the panel. Uh, we have Pastor N all the way from Ireland. She sits on the advisory board of many uh, women boards. So she's working with women um, and she has experience with working with women. So it will be interesting uh, how she's going to address some of the issues that have been raised uh, in this book. And we have, of course, the beautiful Magdalene Lafontent, uh, CEO and founder of Nakai Skincare Cosmetics. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Hello. Thank you, Auntie Mimi. Mimi. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, lovely. Mr. Mukuntu, I have mm. seen this book that you have written somewhere, somehow. It's now been uh, labeled the Sekuru book uh, <laughs> of the mm. boys. Mm. <laughs> but the women yeah. are reading it too. Uh, what got you to this point where you are writing this book? Um, I've been uh, watching with interest um, how society as a whole these days is just uh, focusing on the girl child and uh, sort of ignoring the boy child. And um, from my research is engaged worldwide, uh, they show that boys are lagging behind. And uh, I'm sure um, you, if you read the book on page number eight, I talked of my, 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 my results, I get one, you know, that's a program for International Student Associate Assessment, PISA, that got published on 21 November 2017, which states that uh, my, the boy child is lagging behind worldwide by my disciplines. It says, meaning good uh, attention to the community, and um, Besides, um, I've also come across a number of radical feminists uh, who, instead of uh, statements, I talk about so the boy child. One of my statements, Mamwe, I know to denigrate the boy child, like my statements, all men are potential rapists and uh, men are very privileged. Uh, this. They speak in a way as if uh, everything is okay for, for the boy child, everything is okay for the man. So uh, if you want to complain, you know, you've got male privilege. As a result, men are suffering in silence because uh, speaking about men's issues is labeled as a um, hate speech against women. So such issues, so I'm a musician, and I've been looking closely uh, at my developments are going to field music like here in Zimbabwe. Uh, music is good, but very well. So we've got a number of uh, men who are very financially stable. So that's the one of the reasons why I call the book Sekuru because the boy child um, of course, Mazana, it's now an Asekuru, I noticed it, but this book is there with this um, as a man, Mfanoko, I'm Vimi must be a hunter. We don't go mirror watching it on our cards. Of course, the feminism, but it's basically one chapter, but basically, Mugoso and the doctor are boys. And it's sort of like local room talk on a old change Panama tips with the some of you, Mango, Square, who try to look at nice. Who, things that are expected of women or Anna. But it's really attractive for more is to marry, to be masculine, not to be feminine or Anna. Because most of the guys in the music industry, I'm sure you've seen a number of times where cards watch wago complain about from our Facebook live, blah, 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 blah. So I'm telling the guys, 
being a man, a man is supposed to provide. Of course, we can't work from the basa, which is okay. Because in the kitchen, we have to name our sisters. I'm going to cook. But under normal circumstances, when the basa for a woman is optional, because I'm going to go and come back. We have to come back provide. And it's, uh, and it's accepted by any society. But Murume Utongo Garapa and Bauchingo Chingadonem cards like uh, some colleagues who are in the music industry, what they're doing, it's not uh, expected of a man. So basically, the one up in a gap, one in Shurume, and Mazano, you know, it's now sort of dangerous to doctor or to speak up for men because they are labeled sexist and there's no a lot of disadvantages. And they're not going to share Basa, Gadotra Gabasa in some universities. But thank God I'm not looking for work, so I've got the freedom to, to speak out. All right. Uh, mm. I, I, first and foremost, I want to commend you because you say in your book that you met a man uh, that made you to reflect on things. And mm. it was someone who was senior to you. So I took it that uh, that man impacted your life, changed how you were thinking about life. And then mm. you did not stop there about changing. You actually went out. You say you are actually holding seminars um, in your studio where you are talking to young men. So I have to commend you on that. I think you, actually it's not seminars as such, but uh, every time I do recordings, because uh, I'm 50 years old now. So for the past uh, 15 to 20 years, most groups that I work with, uh, usually I'm the oldest. So young men always come up to me, and say, I'm not going to be a good person. As a result, amongst my musicians, I was kind of like, you know, advice about my marriage, about my relationships, they come to me. So many times, I do studio, my studio sessions, they end up being my counseling sessions. But then you discuss your such, uh, such matters. And as you know, you got to practice something, you end up wanting to experience. So basically, they're not 100% seminars. I got my studio sessions that will end up being uh, counseling sessions. Right. So the, in, your, in the foreword of your book, it says roles are assigned to us by gender and path, the path that we are taking uh, is almost certain at birth. And uh, at birth, we actually are born with differing um, roles. And you, it is highlighted that roles are not superiority or inferiority, but must be celebrated. That difference must be celebrated. Do you actually believe that at birth uh, our our path is set by gender? Yeah, I do. But I would like to I would like to highlight what the, the forward was written by a friend of mine. He's a yeah. pastor um, called uh, Pastor Chimsoro. Mm -hmm. But uh, we discussed about the book and he read the manuscript and uh, that's when he contributed. He made his contributions. I read his contributions. I agreed with them. Okay. That's why I allowed them to this book. But I do agree with my gender roles, uh, those that we call traditional gender roles are assigned to us by God or by nature. So sorry, you know, by nature, because they are very natural, so by nature, they are not very much afraid of risk. That's why you not even think so um Mutkarika lab liwa is lady driven. It um you know you know you know you know in a higher cost those workers usually they are afraid of uh how they, they they avoid my risk and we are made by nature uh in, in our nature so there are certain things which they have nothing to do with socialization I know between my theories and other things sex is natural but gender is a socialization that's not true and I've got a chapter in the book where I wrote about um. Yeah, the John Juan case, you Canada. Uh, this uh, couple were getting twins. One of them was a private person by mistake, and then they were advised by somebody called uh, Doctor Mani to raise the child as a girl, to socialize the child as a girl, and never let him know that he was born as a as a boy. So I got to cura. I just. It was some scanner, but it was my jail. My man's much mama, woman, injections, what not, what not. But still, as he grew up, I go further my toys, the chumi, I go far up time by the wrestling cells, or more common, I followed up in a matrix, the chumi, Paratango pigs or dress, I got a barrel. You can look it up, it's there on the internet, just search for the John Juan case. Or so I got those of the later on, what's wrong with me 
And then that's when he was told that you were born as a boy, but you were socialized as a girl, which means that socialization theory of gender comes through socialization. It's not a true theory. Nature, without reading any book, that's nature. And the panama research I get quite a little Makudo, Chao, not people, Makudo, Chao, I swing a room with Matuiz, which has a Matuiz, which room, Makudishka, the end of Matuiz, which has Makudish room, agenda of Matuiz, which room. So I do believe with my gender roles, they are natural, and the gender is natural. It has nothing to do with socialization. Socialization might enhance, but quite what in doing of it, the outright in defining the meta papa gender. Right. Uh, Magda, As, Magda, are you in? I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Yes. You can hear this introduction that we've had and you've been reading this book together with us. Uh, what is your perception about uh, the gender at birth? What do you think? Uh, can it be, is this a fallacy? Is this just a discussion that people are just labeling, putting statements? Or is this something actually that could potentially be true that women will tend to go in a certain direction, men will tend to, to go in a certain direction in terms of roles, in terms of play, in terms of what the things that they do? Yes. Uh, well, first of all, I want to say uh, thank you for this opportunity to get to sit down. And I always feel so proud, Mr. Mkundu, to have um, books that I can relate to, meaning that that are written by our people. And when I say our people, I mean as in Zimbabweans, because that's what I relate to first and foremost. Uh, same as uh, Auntie Mimi as well, who has written two phenomenal books as well. So I really appreciate you for writing this book because it has uh, brought up so many things in my head. Um, I've had certain thought processes as well as I'm sitting there by myself, reading it through, writing down the notes and everything else. And even getting the men's perspective of everything that you wrote in your book. So really and truly, I appreciate your work. Um, you. When it comes to the, 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 the um, case of saying uh, a natural thing, right? Natural thing of being a woman and being born a woman and being born a man, I completely agree at 100%. However, when it comes to roles and... Um, uh, let's say instincts, right? Um, we all agree, I don't know if you all agree that there is a notion or a statement called charity begins at home, right? So however it is that you lead your family, being a man or a woman, that is exactly what you're going to follow. There was a child, I don't know if you saw the documentary, there was um, a boy who was actually raised with dogs. This was a story in the United States, caged with dogs, like kept with dogs for years and years. Um, this child grew up like a dog, never walked, but was literally crawling like a dog. Uh, he never talked, he bugged like a dog, right? So whatever environment besides yes, being the female and the male, I also do believe that what it is that you expose your child with from a young age is really what they're going to gravitate towards, right? So in regards to, you know, to toys, for example, I, I half agree and I half disagree, right? That, you know, boys automatically gravitate to boy toys or Whatever this boy toy is, which again, I am that person that disagrees that there is a toy that is called for a boy or for a girl. I just, uh, of course, we have put genders on these. This is not something that you and I started. It's been around for a long time. And we've all seemed to go into the fold of following what is a boy toy and what is a girl toy. So that being said, I, I don't fully believe in that sense of, of saying, you know, it's a natural thing that 
a boy will gravitate to boy toys and a girl will gravitate to to girl toys um yeah that is my take on that uh i have two girls and um honestly and fully in raising my girls they play with toys period they play with truck okay so you can continue and uh, uh mr masimba how are you say i'm good my name is plot if you if i could kindly uh give just a little bit of headroom so that your head is not cut would be awesome yeah just a bit more All right can you hear me now yes i can hear you now yeah so your head is cut uh the first is cut like in the middle so if, mm. you... right. if i said like this perfect perfect okay, okay. awesome so can you hear me? still good to go magda if you could take it up like like a minute from where you were and okay well you have to edit <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so um as i was saying that in your in your book there's a part that you wrote about i think it's um in regards to fewer women in power right and uh you mentioned that um you know like petroleum engineering i think also pharmaceutical sciences the percentage of men that are in you know in these job positions compared to females right um and then you also talked about how naturally men are risk takers than women right um i'm not going to go on and do percentages because obviously the percentage will will be more advantageous for men than women which i completely agree but my question to you is looking at now right now as we are how comfortable do you think men are with rising women who are risk takers who are aggressive in the workplace and for me aggressive and humble don't go together like if you're aggressive you're aggressive you are taking charge at work you're giving orders at work how comfortable do you think men are mr mukundu in having women that are you know rising more and more these days in these positions of taking risk giving orders at work we're not talking in the home we're talking at work like as the ceo giving orders to men how do you think this is being accepted in the society amongst men Okay yeah first of all uh, the point that you mentioned is on page 59 and on that topic I was talking about uh, the gender wage gap and uh, my point was that uh, generally the gender wage gap is caused uh, by career choices and uh, uh, women are said to love uh, people and men are said to love things so generally there are certain jobs that we men gravitate towards certain jobs like my 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 stem green my my stem fields and women usually gravitate towards my jobs and she would have issue to change the one and she are in children and and so forth saka ipa pon do panda ita ram book with do paru konzera that we are the 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 wage difference um between men and women and she will go pa 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 book much on page 60 a mastic sandaka andaka research on ku petroleum 87% yevano hariko varume they are men pharmaceutical sciences kuno go ne 48% men anyway zvino zvinhu munozongo zvirenga mbuk but what i would like to say is this uh, the, this research is not a research in 1940 something it's a recent research on oh, saka it's not something chaitika udara kuti vakadzi vaifara ma jobs akati these days zvachinja it's still the same and if you go to my countries if you research on countries like my scandinavian countries those countries are known to to have more um, equality as you as they want to call it than any other countries where we have a lot of equity a lot of ma quota laws and that workers are pinned ma ma in field and go achida so women are allowed to choose because one that we choose uh, as much as men if you go to those countries and research you don't you, you, anyway, you don't need to go there ne ne tatani internet you can just research you notice could mas scandinavian countries no matter only a wider gap between my choices i mean no my choices are cuz more than credit is what you could you could you kunema ma anonzi machi 
Uganda kuma Scandinavian countries ndokunotonzi the Saudi Arabia of feminism ma ma, ma Scandinavian countries akati sana Norway and so forth kuma countries akadaro ndokwatone a wider a, a wider ningrine um, inonzi a wider difference between my choices ya rume vakadzi varito wandira mo kuma kuma ma, ma career choices eh aniche kuita nevano like uchengeta vana kuenda kuita ma school teachers and varume varito wandira mo kuma stem subject so it's not like uh, time 21st century sakas wa chinja wakadzi vazara kuma stem subjects no it's still the same right now even kuno ku zimbabwe takata sama jobs anonzi ndei chirume like uh, madada bin building brick laying actually it's still 99% or of course kuno ku anoita ma statistics zvedu but which from where goes ngoti arasa nemazwa ako is very rare kuona pa, pa construction site pane 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 wakadzi vari kushanda those Every manual jobs, and it's not due to oppression. It's simply choices. On so, so I'm man. saying what, what I was saying is, which I I I still hopefully need an answer to. What I was saying is, how do you feel men are accepting all these women that are now coming up in these roles that are supposedly supposedly uh, branded or labeled? Was your first question was about uh, my percentage is another number to in gender wage gap. Point that I'd like to put across is it's still the same. On our kids, we should go under that side. We should go under my engineering jobs, my jobs under physics. It's still the same. But um, we now have women who are going to put my jobs in the room. And that one is a welcome one. And in personally, I advocate for women to drop your my choices and go for a new room because as I wrote in the book, uh, one person who raised me was my sister Cleopatra. She's based in the states. Darong bagana giro na mat baby bagana mat baby. Tika sarat sna a breadwinner. My sister became the breadwinner. So that day kwangu that day that you father just go dance was kind of darongo. So give my bread was ngendo go chikoro and everything. The garden is not to sugar level and that's also sugar. It was because of my sister. So. I'm not against Nyeguti wakazi wapinde ma powerful positions. Where I'm against Nyeguti wakazi wangu ni nina mai mkundu wanzi ndo wa mkuru wewe kaunti ndikati kwa jigo. Ok, Zimbabwe. Wano sikuwa wachi power na ma orders, which is ok. Zinu wa sikuwa kumba wada wani pafu ti ma orders. Mpafu ndo kani wazi kisana mai. Right. Kandru kumba, I'm the head. And that doesn't change. Nukutu you are getting more money kandru ya boss kubasa. Kumba, I'm the head. That's right. Thank you very much. Uh, this is an interesting uh, conversation. Uh, we want to welcome Masimba Musonza. He, Musonza. he is a multi award winning author. He specialty is speculative fiction. Um, he, I spoke to him about this issue, the, the issues that were raised uh, by this book, The Men Vacuum. Uh, Masimba, welcome. Thank you, thank you, Tete. Um, yeah. Greetings to everyone. Greetings, Hi. Yeah. So I want to go back to some of the key points that were spoken about in this uh, book, which was uh, positive um, masculinity. I think I found that I found that uh, interesting about positive masculinity, and it seems to suggest that uh, the current wave right now is that men are restricted. Uh, it seems as though boys are being made to be apologetic, to be boys. Uh, and it seems like we are focusing on the negatives of the masculinity of men in that if a man, uh, maybe we're talking more about domestic violence, we're talking more about rape, but we are not focusing on the positive things like the strength of a man rather than to use it for violence, he can use it to safeguard and protect his family. He can be a hunter things like that. Uh, Masimba, I don't know, what is your take on that? Do you think the society is anti-men or has live, is leaving men at a disadvantage now because now we are running after empowering the girls or the women? Um, right, first of all, I want to apologize for my late entry into uh, this discussion, uh, technical issues, all that, all that. My personal take 
on it is that we do have what I call, this, I think this is how our civilization is going to die, what I call a chattering class. These are people who set themselves up as experts and are articulating the position, you know, which is stated where, again, being masculine is being seen as a bad thing. Um, and for some reason, we are meant to feel bad as men simply because we do, we do have... We do have a set of men who do some very evil things, but um, my brother there with the stats will agree with me that this is not every man. Not every man is raised to be like that. It's just a small group of people. Um, the sex predators is always, they're the ones who are preying on everyone else. But for some reason, the rest of us are being made to feel guilty for their actions. Um, for me, um, culturally, as you can see from the long hair and the Rastafarian. Um, in our religion, which is a biblical one, um, the understanding is that at first there wasn't a gender. Um, Adam was neither male or female. You can, if you read it in the Hebrew, um, Adam, or even in Hebrew now, it still means a, it means a human being. It's only later when God saw that there was an inadequacy in this man and he caused him to become two beings. The male he called Ish, and the female he called Isha. That's when you see the two words beginning to appear, male and female. That's why it says male and female, he created them. Um, and the understanding is that we, are, we, we form a partnership. You know, so the things that are now being called um, toxic in men, or the things that are considered negative in women are actually incomplete aspects which you know um as families you know they're, they're made of a covenant between a man and a woman so when people start to talk about you know like um it's been articulated men go out there and do things and women um these are these are partnerships you know it has to do with nature a woman can make a fine business executive can make a, a fine anything um, and just for the record you did ask about the work environment I don't have a problem taking orders from a woman. If she's, if she's the boss, she's the boss. There's, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. On the domestic front, the domestic front is, is a partnership. I know it's, it's, it's become fashionable for men to say, oh yeah, we're in charge. Or for women to say, oh no, it's now our turn since we're the ones making the money. But that's not how it should be. You know, it's, it's a partnership. People work, the, the, this is nature. A woman spends potentially you know, several months of the year where she cannot participate in economic activities because she's carrying a baby. Whose baby is she carrying? She's carrying, um, well, as a man, I look at it as it's my baby, it's our baby. So during that time, because I don't have the same biological constraints, I can still engage in economic activities. You know, this is, this is how God has made us. And that's why people form these partnerships. It's an understanding. You're having just my baby. You know, you're not sleeping with every other man. And in return, I guarantee you that I'm going to go out there and get all these resources for our baby. So you've got that security that, okay, I'm going to have this man's baby. And in return, he's going to bring home the bread. And um, I'm not going to go around having other babies with other women and thereby spread out these resources you know it's it's implied in the whole thing and when it when it's done like that you know with two adults when i say two adults because a lot of the relationships that we do form these days they're not very adult are they and they are not in our interests and they're not in the children's interests so that is where i am coming from okay the issue was raised um, about women not engaging in like you know stem subjects and so on and so on again I think it's, it's, it's the women making that decision. It's, it's women making that decision, especially in societies where there are opportunities for everyone. You know, they're not prepared to make a stand and say, well, this is what I want to do. And maybe, yeah, they don't want to do it. And I think there is pressure on women just to prove a point where they're being forced to do things they don't want to do by society. Like, you don't really want to be a scientist. There's nothing wrong with if you say, look, I want to stay at home and be a caregiver and the man go out there. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And I think for me, because I'm a strong believer in freedom, people should define 
for themselves, what they want in terms of a relationship. Um, that means as a man, if you do want a lady who stays at home and you say to her, hey, look, you know what? I'm going to burn myself out. By the time I'm 40, I'm going to have all sorts of health problems just so I can make the millions while you stay at home. If, if you're both okay with that, it's, it's no one else's to say, oh, yeah, well, you know, because of, I don't know, uh, gender critical theory and so on and so on and so on. Right? We can't live life the way it's being drawn up by university professors. You know, we do things that work for us. Uh, okay, I hear you. I think there is a point that is raised in the book as well that uh, politicians are um, advocating for female-friendly um, maybe laws or anything like that because there's more women in the society and this will help them to get the vote. Um, is, it, is this a religious thing? Is this a political thing? Uh, is the whole society now, is it rising against men or something went wrong somewhere and the women were left to look after their sons? Society has, got, it has hit the self-destruct button. You look at Western civilization, I can tell you, it is on its way out. And that is coming from one, they've put the man, um, they've made the man to take a back seat. You know, I live in, in Middlesbrough, a town which if you check the stats, there's a lot of men out there just drinking and on drugs and just don't know their place. They don't know how to be men. Um, the media is reinforcing it, that there is something wrong with being a man, which I find ridiculous. Yeah, if we are to survive, um, Zim community, there's a lot of men have been badly bred, but at the same time, a lot of women have been badly bred. And it takes, it takes a certain man and woman to look back and say, look, the way my father used to do things, the way my grandfather used to do things, that's not me. Same thing with the women. You know, you look at how your mother, maybe a lot of our mothers put up with stuff. I don't know, staying, when it comes to staying power, there's nothing like, Zim, Zim women get the medal for staying power. The sound stuff you put up with, you just look at, was it necessary? You know, that, these are things that we need a bit of introspection. And then to sit back, sit down at the table, man and woman, say, look, let's do it differently. You know, let's do it differently. And I think one of the biggest, like in our society is, there's a certain communalism. A man is told how to be a man by everyone. A woman is being told how to be a woman by everyone. So even when you get married, everyone is telling you, oh yeah, well, we didn't like the fact that your wife was dancing on television. Said, she's a performing artist. Yeah, I know, but you know, she's our, she's our Marora now when we paid for her. So you need to tell her to stop. I think, but she was already doing that when I met her. Yeah, 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 well, well you know, you need, that needs to stop. And, these are some of the things that bring us down. Um, you've got coming to this country. A lot of men, when they came over, because we had been brought up in Zim as the lords and masters, and then you realize that as an immigrant, actually, you start, you start small. You know, you start cleaning toilets, even with your um, master's degree in engineering, before you learn your way around the country. A lot of men were unwilling to do that. Women went into the cleaning jobs, women started making the money and women started asking themselves, right, what do I need this guy for really? Because he doesn't do anything. He doesn't want to at least help with the kids. Uh, I don't know if these were points I already covered. So it just stopped me fun because I do tend to ramble on. Um, and then the woman is doing all that. And while he's there saying, oh yeah, now you're making money, then you're bigger than me. I'm going to beat you. I can show you who's boss um, kind of thing, right? That brings another point. Being a man doesn't mean you have to beat your wife. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you have to hit her, you have lost the struggle. Mm. So how these things work. You don't beat your wife. Uh, you wanted to ask me something. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I, am, I am thinking deeply about what, what you are saying because uh, maybe if we shift over to Pastor N, who's been working with women uh, to see what, what are her views on all these things. Because the women we are 
from the work that I do, women are hurt. Sorry, women let me are... let me just make an underlying point. When I look at the okay. women, we're talking about staying power. Mm -hmm. This is again up true about our society. Our women, okay, I'm blanketing again, and you can take it any way you want, but our women have the lowest standards in men that I've ever seen in any society. And I don't know what that is. The way men are brought up in our society is you have a woman, she's so glad to be your wife that she's just going to do everything to please you. And yet for some reason, women have never been brought up with those kind of expectations. If I was to say, say I married a woman I picked up in a bar, you know, I'm talking about how the Zimbabwean women, how the Zimbabwean society understands a woman you've picked up in a bar. And then two, three years later, I find out none of the kids are mine and she runs off with all my money. I can guarantee you, everyone will laugh at me and say, but what did you expect? And yet, for some reason, a Zim woman thinks that any man she meets, if she cooks for him right, she's nice to his family, and she's, you know, she's this fantasy in bed that somehow his better nature is going to show. You know, we need to stop, we need to tell our women that look, there are different types of men out there and you have to choose. So you don't make a man, you know, I'm an adult. You just take me as I am. You know, if I'm the sort of person who believes in slapping a lady around so she knows her place, don't think that's going to change just because your pastor told you in church that it's going to happen. And my mom has been telling you, <laughs> it's not going to happen, you know. We need to raise our girls to have certain standards and say, oh, look, this is what's going to happen. Instead, you see the woman trying very hard to be, you know, to be the perfect woman. She's buying my family things and she's just pandering to everything. She can see the lipstick stains on my shirt and she pretends that she doesn't. What kind of nonsense is that? Right. Right. I, I, I hear your questions. I don't know uh, if anyone on the floor wants to respond to that, that uh, women, are, we, we are doing like we are trying to, to buy a man with our goodness, with the things that we, we are doing, uh, trying to please your family for you. Uh, mm -hmm. But you, you, you are actually doing things that you should not be doing in a partnership, but the woman is taking it. Uh, I don't know, is anyone ready to come in or should I move over to Pastor N? I think, well, Pastor N hasn't spoken in a while, so I'll let her go first and then I will, I will revert back to what Mr. Masodza and Mr. Mpundu was talking about earlier. So go ahead, um, Pastor, Pastor N. N. Thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations, Mr. Mukundu for a wonderful book. I want to believe it's gonna be a, a very good tool to use as we will be uh, you know, sharing it with uh, the boys and uh, the men because there has been an outcry uh, and the outcry is so big. Uh, women saying we are always having uh, events put in place for us to groom us, to mentor us, to help us, you know, uh, in life situations. But there seems not to be enough being done for the males, for the boy child, for the men. And uh, it is sort of uh, put off the balance um, in the homes. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Pundu. Congratulations, and what an interesting discussion here. Wow, I am excited uh, hearing about how uh, the society uh, is, uh, there, there is an imbalance in society. Uh, it's something that I have seen. I am involved uh, with a lot of uh, marriage counseling, you know, with the women ministry and all that. So. I, on a daily basis, I'm dealing with uh, some of these things. So I am very happy to be on this platform. What I have seen is uh, indeed, there seems to be 
an imbalance between the men and the women, especially those from our, our, our nation, or should I say our, our background, uh, maybe it has been caused by how many of us have been brought up. Like one speaker has uh, rightfully said, when we were talking about the, 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 the toys, male toys and female toys, I believe some of these things, that's where they are coming from. Uh, because where the, the way that the males have been groomed, they have been uh, taught to fight, you know, to be fighters, to be able to, to, to have an aggressive spirit. And uh, that helps them to, 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 to penetrate better in those areas where they, 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 they can flourish more. Then we have the girl child, you know, if they want to be competitive, they, they seem to be slowed down to say, no, 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 you can't do that. And you know, you need to, to, to be calm. You need to be uh, nurturing the, the, the dolls, you know, learning nurturing skills. And somehow that can it actually put an inferiority complex in the girl child and then give an, a, superior, a superior complex in the males. You see, a woman might feel ah, be, being very reserved because of some things that they, they, they it takes them back. But a male child, uh, even when they have got, let's say things like uh, Matea, you will see them, they, they, they don't even be bothered, bothered about those things. They can continue and make it in life, irregardless of sometimes their looks, sometimes there's the little things that they might be fighting. So right from there, we can see that it can put something in the girl child that can make them, as they progress in life, to tolerate some things, uh, maybe in marriage, that they might not tolerate. I'm also um, cognizant of the fact that we do have on the other side, uh, you know, talks where people think, oh, men are privileged. And it's not always like what it has been brought up from here. It's not always because we have also seen a new thing on, on the block, you know, uh, uh, men suffering in silence. There has been uh, do domestic abuse of males as well. So surely there has to be a tool to educate the males to make them to also come out and be receive help, you know, and not to suffer in silence because they are these things are real. They are also happening. Maybe coming from the stand in the workplace as you have said, for those women who would have made it big, who now want to come home and boss up the men and bully the men. Um, though it is not the case in all the situations, sometimes you can also have women who are doing well in the marketplace and they have uh, a good balance. They have managed to balance themselves up they know that when they get home, they need to be a wife. I want to believe we still have got a, a work there to help the women to balance it up, to know that the moment they get home, they need to take off that jacket and begin to be a mother to the children and to be, begin to be a wife to the husband because uh, they are not bringing home their head as a boss from work. So I want to believe uh, if, if us, the women, can embrace this, uh, we, they, it will eliminate most of the problems that um, might happen at home. Uh, you know, some of the divorces, some of those things that can actually make the, send the men to go out, like what Mr. Msonza was now saying, that some of these men, they are coming with lipstick patches on their jackets or on their shirts. 
and uh, the woman is just there to tolerate that. It's not, it's not supposed to be like that. But we also want to make sure that it's not the woman who is neglecting her role then by sending away the husband. Wow. This is, this, is, this is fascinating because when we were growing up, I will talk about my era. When we were growing up, we, we were sort of trained that the ultimate goal is getting married. So whatever you were doing when you were choosing career, they'll say, how can someone's wife have a job like that? How can someone's wife climb the trees? How can someone's wife... So for us, the women, it was the end goal was the marriage. So when you get into that marriage, you are thinking that even if the husband is coming with the lipstick, that was your end goal. So now we are reversing those things. But when we are reversing those things, it seems like the scales now are tipping the wrong way. I think there is a statement that uh, uh, Mr. Mkundu wrote in his book, which he says there is a wave where we have to, about the pendulum striking a balance, that we need to have a balance. That as we are running after the sons and the daughters, there needs to be a balance. But the reason why a woman is tolerating those things, already we have built in that inferiority complex in it. So it's for us to change both sides. I, I, that is what I'm thinking, that as much as the men are feeling like that, the women have felt like that for a long time. And these jobs we are talking about, sometimes in those jobs, there's so much pressure that the woman ends up go, going into doing a job that is nurturing and caring because it is easily designed for the woman and there is less pressure. So Mark Jalin, are you here? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Um, uh, I, first of all, I want to say uh, to Mr. Msodza, I 100% agree with what you were mentioning just now in regards to it's a partnership, right? When you're in a relationship, in a marriage, it's a partnership. Um, that being said, uh, there's a part in, in Mr. Mkundu's book when he talks about the essence of motherhood and uh, you basically talk about women empowerment, right? Um, for me, when it comes to women empowerment uh, on that chapter, um, you talked about how there's so much shaming behind uh, housewives, Right. And um, and for me, when I look at it, uh, being a mother and uh, of course, being an advocate of women empowerment and the girl child and everything else that involves around the girl child, because I know that it's my duty to do this. Right. Um, as we talked about Anatete Nana Sekuru. Right, we've talked about what Anasekuru Dova no Gara Nevana Kumana Vachva Zizisa Anab Anatit and Dwano Gara Nevanaska no Chva Zizisa, which really and truly the more I stay with it, the more I actually realize that in some parts we are, and I'll speak for myself, I am possibly half doing this the wrong way. What do I mean by that? I think that it's also time that Vanatete Vatore Nevana Kumana. That's right. where that whole balance comes in that Mr. Msodza was talking about, that it's a partnership, right? Because if the guys stay with the guys in the teachings and everything, they're only going to understand from the guy's perspective of things. If a woman stays with the girl child on, on advising things, then the girl child who then becomes a woman is only going to stick with the perspective coming from a woman oh and there's not that interchangeable of what's going on when it comes to feelings and all these other things that brings a point for me of something that um i would like to ask or if you know if you're aware that when it comes to the whole shaming of housewives women amongst ourselves we actually do not shame ourselves on house on, on housewifing we don't. There is over 50 books that's been written about housewives, about other women, commanding other women and understanding the duty it is to take of being in the house 24-7, right? Where I see the issue of partnership coming in is actually the men understanding the part that there is what is called postpartum depression. 
it's a thing, you know, and this is something that in our culture, again, it was never talked about, just like how to this day, um, it's a taboo in Zimbabwe for your father to talk to you about your menstrual cycle. I, it, it baffles me right now why that is an issue. Why can't my father talk to me about sex when I have my period and it's just supposed to be a female duty, which really, who gets to sleep with the woman? It's the man, right? So this is where I was going with the part of, I feel like, my next duty now is to balance this whole girl empowerment with boy empowerment. So coming back to the whole shaming of housewives, it's, it's really for me, I don't see it as, as shaming. It's more of there is a thing called postpartum depression, which a lot of men do not understand that postpartum depression comes in with mood swings, anxiety, sadness, uh, crying, irritability. There's so much that is involved that when the man comes home and thinks that, well, you've been home the whole day, you know, what's the issue here? I'm the one who's been working out, you're home with the child, everything is supposed to be okay. And this is something that is actually a, whole, a hormonal shift. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's not something that you're asking for, just like, you know, having your menstrual cycle. It's not something that you want or you ask. This is part of your hormonal cycle as a female. So I just want to make a point that it's really never about us women shaming a housewiving or thinking that it's not a good enough job. If anything, I actually think that as women, we command each other when we're in these positions. The only issue that comes in is when a woman then wants to get out of it. That's where the issue comes in on where a female feels that they can't stand up for themselves now because they feel, you know what? I've had enough of staying at home with kids. Now I want to go out and make a career out of myself, right? That's where the balance then comes in where, you know, where it's deemed as, oh, now she she's putting career first before the, you know, before the children. It's, it's not that. Have you ever turned it around and actually thought that it's now these women crying out saying they actually want to get out of this uh, postpartum depression and doing something different rather than just taking care of the home? Yeah. I, I think also there has Can been a... a, a mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Because I was thinking, since uh, I, I was thinking, at any point, you think I raised well about the book, maybe I, it would be nice if I respond. Okay. Um, yeah. So, Nigrini, I do agree with you uh, when you said, with Nigrini, it's not women shaming other women. If you read the chapter, it's on chapter three, page 16, the first line, you know, to the young men should be taught not to look down upon full-time housewives. So I agree with you, Kuti. It's not women shaming other women, although Wakadzogadarwari Kofut was shaming other women for being housewives. But the point I was trying to make in this, uh, on this chapter is, Kuti, uh, it's accepted, Kuti, as long as the husband can provide. But at the same time, Funny this idea she's shamed for being a housewife titles defender But on this chapter, my point was with their mother instead of kura names instead of kura they are taken care of better. Oh, nah, my, well, you still remember last time Rambo raised a point you see, most children these days are being maintained, they're not being raised. But we are not raising them. Raising a child is kutokura chumzitsa chaka chaka shata chaka shata. And uh, traditionally young young were roy my mothers. But even though and so forth, it's still a very big advantage for the child. So on chapter three, my main point was basically that was the point. And then you also mentioned in about my menstrual issues and so forth. I don't know if you are aware, right now in Zimbabwe, fathering has changed a lot. 
Right now I'm recording about three girls uh, studio kwangu. Every time one one wants of studio and another about you. One of the man on the chairs I'm I don't know if you watch my jam sessions I know become studio. She's a serious saxophonist. I know that my instruments is Pano ya studio ano ya na baba wachu baba wachu ando garambu uti kanungo paka panze uti I don't want to disturb you. Pesa pani itama shows akwa baba wachu ndo the biggest cheerleader ano wa shushu itama videos wa shita everything. The same thing ni mwa andrugu re kuda fula nonzi dadai kle ano wana a lot of support from the father as well as from the mother. Even wangu mwa namsikana my first born is the 10th 26th uh, ni zuro on the no she turned 26th on the 7th of October. Painda uh, kushikoro my teachers are they will always take me aside with nayo mwana wenyu imaka mukudza say she's very different from all the other girls but when the pressure but nenda kuma outings haumbo muna chisona no kuma that ini ni wangu ndakagara naye pasi bana mudza kuti get the tips from isu so varume my tricks are no shandisa on you vakadzi wana vanta kuti mudza kuti ukwana varume vachita zvakadzi zvakadzi varungoda zvakati kwa rume sex and emotions so be careful of this, be careful of that. So, point and daughter, a papa and daughter, a point young guy, star, a mag, the Udanzi, one on one fan of who, and ask an offer of Tara to be able to speak to their fathers on feminine issues. These days, there's a the punish shift to the serious it comes Zimbabwe when it comes to fathering, and the pan a very big improvement. So I can assure you, Papa. Of course, I pass the echo one or two. The green, I can't have statistics as some exceptions, but the bigger picture and the way the fathering here in Zimbabwe is greatly improved. So, so um, can I help? You? Sorry, um, um, Pastor. So this this is quite interesting. So then, when it comes to uh, the the whole mama's boy. Right, we're talking about this whole thing of a woman, the natural thing, staying home, raising the kids. You also have to understand that when the mother is staying home with the boy child, right, she is raising her with the mentality of what she knows best, right? And then at the end of this, it ends up being this whole name calling of mama's boy. What's your take on that? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, if you read book, Mangum, uh, one thing that I don't know state very strongly is the balance between um, Amai and Baba. Kuti mwana kana chikura anufa nukura ine balance ya Amai na Baba. I'm sure the boy child waru taura we is a boy child akura pasna Baba. Bamba. And then we've got a lot of um, Migrini children waru kura wasna wana Baba Pamba. And in the book, I mentioned that there's a difference between parenting yama yana baba and parenting yana mai. Parenting yana mai yaka wanda more the nurturing side. Msada rumana wangu, msada rumana wangu, msada rumana wangu, msada rumana wangu. Parenting yana baba ine kao rasuni skaye na wakumkadi. So a child needs the balance. Wana za sayo jonoti, mwana kakura, let's say papa pasuna baba. Ayungo nina mai, mwana wangu, msada rumana wangu, msada rumana wangu. Pani nda uchikoro, aga fundusu wana, tisha wangu mburisa futi. I'm sure the Warugu states, mnema cases, zaga dari one a lot of rebellion, rebellion issues. Father knows the doctor Farrell, I can hear about the boy crisis. I can list down 70 my problems. I know one who I know one who was not a baba pamba. In the canoe, a kuman, do my mama's boy that you're talking about. I would I think I can go raise what you go there about my female issues. And one point, I don't know, raise of 50 papa, I wrote it in my book. I was also raised by my mother after my parents had split uh, uh, the, before I was a teenager. And uh, because the way my mother was divorced, and I was born in the house, 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 I had no problem with that. From Kumbaku, no cards, this guy respected women. But as long as I reach church room, I don't need to know. But by the time I reach form three, I think that's not the two weeks in snow. She got his quiet mass and Chiramba grow on a match. She has Matija joins Anuchi, sir, who took a Saganam corridor, no teas and do watch on that to the Saganam corridor. So if I know the funny my issues, the Utumuna, Kura Snababa, you are known as my daddy issues. Even Kuaskana Shagunotunzi, Waskano, Kura Snababa Pamba. The last one I would see, I don't know, fifteen, but I don't know anymore. I'm thirty-five, I'm forty, even I'm fifty. Oh, so 
though the issue that you raised yeah mama's boy it's, it's usually an issue no konzana to mwana akakura asina baba pamba mwana kuti akura ari balance and love ya baba ne love ya mai zvese zvakasangana mwana anobva kura ari balance Pastor and you wanted to say something yes um, i'm concurring with what we are uh, the points that we are bringing out here but also just to add on uh, just, uh like what um uh, babam kundu has said we have got uh, a number of men who have got daddy issues va komana va raiseva ne na na mai because they are bana baba avapo and uh, in this day and age we've got quite a, a number a big number of such men who did not have an opportunity uh, not not by choice but they didn't have that opportunity to be raised by a father figure and you will see that uh, some of them will be good at uh, some roles uh, that we might easily assign to females kugona kubika we have got uh, women who have been married uh, to men who are very good cooks men who are very good with uh, children uh, because they have been brought up in that environment by their mummies maybe most of them they could, it, it could have been because they were mostly boys at home so there was no a girl that they didn't have a sister in the house so they had to do all the dishes they had to do laundry they can iron uh, you know in a in a superb way and they come they, uh, uh, they they are now married to a woman who might not have been raised in a in an environment you know mature up that and then i think if there is not that balance these are some of the causes of today's uh, problems in marriages the many divorce cases and all that so there needs to be a balance as well to embrace these men it's not that they they is wrong there's nothing wrong about them uh, <laughs> we we also need to embrace them times have changed uh, i think it is sometimes we can have other men it could be a small percentage of men who have got oversized ego who will say <laughs> I, 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 can, i i cannot uh, i cannot cook i will not cook uh, i cannot do this because these are the duties they are assigned to the women but then i have come across marriages whereby you can see a husband who is good at doing other chores or other duties that are naturally are uh, assigned to women but when there is understanding in that marriage and when they know this one is good at this and the, this partnership that we're talking about is rightfully uh, embraced in that marriage this marriage will do well so i want to believe in this day and age uh, we don't need to be too much dogmatic <laughs> about some of these roles um uh for 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 us to move on and settle well in 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 any setup okay can i respond to that go oh, ahead sir yeah okay uh when it comes to boys who were raised by their mothers we cannot say there is nothing wrong with them nambuta roti pana anonzi dr farewa akata roti anzi there are more than 70 akalista down more than 70 issues is uh, notera vana vakakura vasina vana baba and i think i've raised some of them so the best way to raise vana is to have mwana anukura aina mai aina baba that's why we, i'm writing book and i thought that this book is a sekuru so i'm encouraging men with kana uchida urora pakurora make sure to urkurora munhu hauna zoda chaije so that you reduce mama and green a divorce one who so who are avoiding it to go divorce because once you divorce one will suffer more is the children not you wewe not mkazo wako one so mwana katokura sina baba kaunda akura sina mai panto ni madefect anto kura aripo then when it comes to gender roles i am clear about that one in i don't uh, agree nyaya kuti tutogohana zvese kutopana na mutemo kuti nhasi ndiri ndiri kubika mangwana ndiri kubika because like i mentioned last time 
tufama ni track edu yo ponja ndichati mkazi ndano chinja viri that's a gender role vaveo yo uya pamba toti mkazi ah kune we have got equality saka tango fana na orumina wakazi timbubudo panzo nurubisa nemba that cannot happen so gender roles are natural and those gender roles they have nothing to do nye yagun zidam 21st century zidam 21st century but human nature is still the same Oh, and that's why you know even what attracts a man to a woman or what attracts a woman to a man is still the same list as in green as stone age so we make a mistake here from what it just was the 21st century so like human nature has evolved is as well as the day you can update your phone you can update your computer but human nature is still the same thing what means the day that power cards you can go stone age is still the same list and uh what you want counts is no contract about because it's not under voluntary control it's human nature so for my gender roles in any uh is for me um kana mkaza arwara ndokwanso big bakana kana ri fit i want cook kana ri fit i want to but but um i also want to say kuti i also appreciate vano ane ma different way of thinking so in i advise vano kuti before you marry make sure you discuss my ideologies and beliefs one because my ism ne maskism ari kumazono awanda like a person like me dai kurunza was not married there's no way i could marry a radical feminist because my views they dagato siana kure one so i think the best would be rudo vaviri the two of you agree kana mabvumirano kuti mese mundo bika it's fine but nangoto for people like me it's not an ego thing or anything i prefer traditional gender roles and they are not outdated gender roles but they are still happening you can call something outdated when it's still happening because 90 something percent of the time those should be taken women are still cooking so that's my point and i stand strongly with that point right uh masimba i don't know if you have something to say oh yeah from um Liber- mm-hmm. i think i just want to reinforce what mr mkundu has said um anas my mama's boy Uh, we call them simps now and mm. it's it's the do toxic masculinity mind you but what it actually is is the consequences of matriarchy and a lot of women are always talking about hey we want to be in power but when you see all these like the high knife crime in london and so on no more consequences of putting the women in charge of boys a lot of those boys are suffering from what is called a man desert When we're growing up in Zimbabwe, a single mother, right? So, were mitigated by the fact that there were still male figures in that child's life, the uncles, the grandfather. Now, a country like the UK, kuvira kuma teacher akuna varume. And all these boys do not know how to be men. That's why they do stupid things like if I see something I don't like on Facebook, a comment, I'm going to call all my friends, we're going to go around and stab someone. that just seems like a perfectly normal thing that is unmanly behavior that's just not done and um there was a an issue that uh, mr mkuntu said you know that growing up he wanted to attack men there's another aspect of um you know behavior in youth and you see this in a lot of youth there's a lot of young men we you know we call them the simps these are the ones who are out they are on a mission to prove to women that not all men are bad because they'll do anything anything for likes by women because they've seen their own mother being badly treated sometimes by a series of men or sometimes by just their own father and they feel that they need to correct that they need to reassure all the women out there that oh not all men are bad that is that is an example of toxic masculinity but you can see that once again it's coming from not having male role models it goes back to what i was saying about a partnership like hadzi you need to choose the kind of man that's going to be there that's going you know you need to look at the bigger picture yeah same thing with men there's this thing you know for especially women's group service in zimbabwe problems 31 did you know that problems 31 is directed at men it's an instruction to men it's 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 wisdom to men that this is a kind of if you choose this kind of woman you will be happy so our women are going to read that that passage but just to be sort of zvirukunzi chi and then to look for that kind of woman in their choices now our culture zim culture 
you know, I'm sorry to say this, but there's this stupid assumption that you can get anyone and then somehow most of Gazi Pambera, you know, like what Mr. Mkudu said, um, if he had known earlier or whatever, he would be, he wouldn't marry uh, a radical feminist. But a lot of us are just finding out. Oh, no, so, sorry, I, no. I, I didn't say if I'd known that if I was unmarried. Yeah, if you were unmarried. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but why is it going to go back? Just to be clear, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and a lot of us are getting into marriages and then later hope that Shagazirisan, you know, uh, which is silly. You know, it's like what Mr. Mkudu said there. You need, before you even do anything, unfortunately, a lot of us also discover after we've slept together and so on and so on. And they're just thinking, oh, well, she's my girl now. What can I do? I'll just put up with that nonsense. Or oh, she's saying to herself, imagine I'm seeing him on our 50 moment. Because everyone knows that I've been with him. It's just some silly ideas. But what we're saying is, let's have grown up people who make grown up decisions. To say, oh, look, oh, you like me. Here's the deal. It's just come back and you me so, so, so. Then I've got three sisters, children of which four. So if you marry me, my father will expect you to have a disaster. This is before you've had all the fun stuff. You know, man says, I need me like so, so, so. Um, it's nice that you want to pursue your career. So, yes, I will support you. Um, I can be a stay at home dad while you go to university. It, it's these are things that I don't see happening. And yet the, we can see the consequences from that not happening. You know, we need to have that. We need to have that courage to say, look, things, the previous, our previous generations have been a disaster. And that's where a lot of the problems are. You know, like I look at my parents' marriage and yeah, there are things that could have been done better. I look at my grandparents' marriage or marriages was later to my polygamy. Those things could have been done better. And I made it to myself. My father even said it to me. He said, look, if you follow you're going to end up the same way. Nothing more needed to be said because I was old enough to see what was going on. So I've tried not to. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. Yeah. So way forward. What is the way forward beyond the book? What is the way forward? The, this book has just made us to start having conversations, to think about what's happening, the imbalance in our society, what is the way forward? Um, I think the way forward, they would see, um, change, but that is what we cannot change anymore. And the times, right. even my ideologies are uh, they will live forever. So, I Marxism, a lot of people don't agree now, but it's not going anywhere. We Hitler go in there, game, and that's here, Yagavinga, Singaiti, Niggas, this one, America, and Russia, and Achiva, and Bonomur, I mean, what you should have been so tongue work, but still up to now, America, what you want to start off with money, you nothing so forth. So, my ideologies, they are, they are not going anywhere. But what needs to be done, Manjira, is for people to make uh, informed decisions, especially when it comes to years of the marriage, so that kind of maro rana manjira, you don't end up in divorce. My parents also ended up in divorce, and we suffered as night as children. So, that's why in this book, um, this book is mainly about boys. Well. But um, in this book, I'm advising boys with the kind of you know, when I'm red flags, we can tell with him, she's not white material. I'm scanning a garage, you know, good at some picture, I'm good at some garage every time by Facebook. You know, from what I just know, change your number. I'm scanning down, I don't want my friends, it's common cheat up, and I'm a friend, it's come on, scanning down, I'm going to my clubs, chitty chitty, even though I'm scanning down, I'm going to pick a mini chitty. Dressing is called a fashion statement for a reason. It's a statement. You know what, uh, what type of a person she is. So there are red flags that you can tell with it. That's a red flag. That's a red flag. And if you ignore those red flags, which you know, I'm just so that I'm just like the other one. Mamba, you know, it's a green conference here. It's a communist party where red flags are everywhere. So uh, to have a stable family, more is our Nakwao. You need to have Babana Mai Walpo Pamba. And then the uh, balance. Basically, that's the way to go from my own view. Uh, I want to say thank you because um, for me, I'm, I am married. We've got an 18-year-old son. 
And I think for years, me and my husband, we were having a conversation. And the conversation was my husband was saying, some things allow me to talk to the son. But I loved my son so much that he then go hakira hakira nyaya. So so when I was reading your book, it, it just made me to think back. And I went to my husband and I said, you know what? I would like to apologize because I, I, I might have gone in uh, when I should not go, gone in. So for me, I think that although it is a book for boys, I think women can also benefit from it because it's an impersonal manuscript that you are reading. You know, like when your husband and wife, you, there is just, you're thinking, you know, yeah. but as I was reading, I could understand my husband, what he was telling me that, no, some things allow me as the husband to talk to the boy child. I'm not so and I may sometimes but this book, I really mm-hmm. honestly as generally as black people, especially in Zimbabwe, I guarantee you one of Akira's with the boys who got us. Did you come by my Zimbabweans and my Africans and my Asians? You notice with my Asians, Shawakatora from the West is just technology. Yeah. Religion, they are not Christians, my Muslim, my Hindu, whatever. Dressing most of it one On the other hand, it says black people, Takatura the negative shit, Takatura of religion and but it's gonna put on the upper side. Takatura dressing the west, Takatura my bed marriages every new ideology about America, Tungo Tora, just because modern, not anything modern to from in America. Anything that do this kind of TV, we are taking all the negative, but technology has to be to Punctuality has to be The professionalism has to be done. We are just taking the negative. So I think Africa should avoid being a dumping ground of the waste. Everything the waste, one or other. All their bad behaviors. And this means that no man gives a tip to go through Madonna funding. Our zooms of the Coca was to be the post cutters right now. UK, it's only 5% of women who identify as feminist. For America, it's um, uh, and see, four out of uh, five women, one thought that is my, my feminist. But that's not go Africa. And uh, it's killing more my marriages, more than my marriages, including the Western world. So, if I as black people, we need to wake up. Because right now, for America, um, my, my single parent, they moved from 20% to 70-something percent because of my ideologies. And going back to my book, funny chapter, I don't mention how the feminism in its original form, it's a white woman movement. It has nothing to do with black people. It was the first wave feminism around 1840-something. It was white women who had my rights to vote, rights to own property uh, from their white husbands. The same period of time, they were still in slavery. Black people were still in slavery. They couldn't own property. They couldn't vote. Same period of time. So I come to my rights. You are Indian. It's white women who come to rights from their husbands. One, one, they were still standing together. Black woman, a black man, but you were for my civil rights. But because the Tango Guns and feminism, so the change is now black men against black woman. Because what my mission is to join a party, but I just join a chest and troops level. It's a good matter. As black people, I think we need to mirror Yango, Akira, any ideology and go back west. And the one thing we need to be careful about is my issues. And of course, one of my American women who are wrong, my black women who go America, they are not first one of our kids Afghanistan, they are not first one of our kids of Zimbabwe, Akatosiana. Naturally, culturalism Zimbabwe, we respect our kids in Zimbabwe. Because I got wrong, I did not my son, he made us anger him too. Because I changed him too. I don't remember the era. Oh, no. I'm going to change his son. And my son, he did not change his son. Then you got us, even you got to have a pampas in a year, but you got to have my own son, and you got to see him because you got to fire and it's not something that I agree with in the book. Not mention how to grow up cards. It's uh, it's not being a man. So basically, point another reason. That's something we we can copy and modify. Like I always tell people, music industry, man, with the Tikango Kopoti for America, could you with a maroon phone? I wish I'm over those no shaman and with a mascandos. Kunoka Shandi, 
ono ukuno kugeta ma scandals i know in number of parties would forget ma scandals ma career ma careers how they ended so certain things we need to copy and then we modify kodo ngoti angonza wakadzi hokuti oh men are trash the other the other time pane south africa kwakamuka nyaye wakadzi vai uraya vane varuma hostel then wakadzi ku south africa vatanga kuti oh men are dogs nemuno mzimbabwe wakadzi vato tutanga pa facebook hashtag oh men are dogs kuti kuti staura wakadzi ku south africa south africa ya gara ino zikano nyaye vaili saka ngati sango hakira ngoti kuti mayatanga tango hakira dzimwe zvacho takura ma families edu vacho varungwa kati pa feminism they are not much into feminism in my marriage is out intact right now kwa america ma black families ndo ari ku influence kwa more ndo ari ku raiwa more then green ne ne feminism that's why kind is always i start out the problem here ma black americans i is from my white police officers it is amongst my black achawega there is too much even terrorism blacks are killing each other more kuti ma blacks they account for the highest amount of deaths in america but yet they are only 13% for america but do one ora yana more do one ora other this is more and this is rukonzo ranya kuti varikubva mzimba dzinana baba so is black people ngati batanidze muridze kuti tisango tsaganya kuti yo varuma kuti zvenyere vakadzi vazodayo we are supposed to compliment each other even ukatasa ma abilities edu chao chao they are there to compliment each other vakadzi by nature this is what is science it's basic biology but i'm not seeing by as much as men that's why we must pose our cause manya kwa wega or much manya kwa wega but it's not an issue to arma of hard these work cause which just goes in simba rakawanda it's for you arume kuti muito ma 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 jobs work cause achito ma nature in jobs we are supposed to compliment and love each other for example there are any ideology and go from the west to put our marriages in the peso paris Ha ma pari. Mark, do you have anything to say before we close? Yes, can I come in? Uh, okay. I want to agree with you Mr. Mukundu and as I continue to thank you for your book. Uh indeed I want to believe kuti zvino zvititira zvakanaka women we must take up um uh, our role as wives is women you know submitting ourselves in marriages when a woman is submissive it doesn't mean that they are inferior it doesn't mean that they are lesser but it actually makes the marriage unit to work better it it work at its best i would say uh when women take their role you know in submission that that, that would just make everything to work good i'm not saying they must uh, be abused they suffer in silence no but as the more we make ourselves submitted to our husbands you will see that the husbands the men they will do their role as uh, you know taking up their role as father figures nurturing the, the the our children to be better husbands and it will eliminate in a bigger uh, percentage this uh, problem that we have of divorces uh, yeah, 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 everywhere so i also want to think that as the men are continuing to be mentored we know that we can it's not an overnight thing uh, already we have got women who are raising uh, children in the in the in the family sector without men so your book comes in as a good tool to help out uh, you know that gap that has been created in society and i want to believe this is not going to be the first and the last but it's just uh, it, it you are going to continue even other men also you know teaming up to make sure that there is a platform where the boys and the men are mentored on the other hand we are saying to the women it is good for us to be submissive let's not uh, 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 uh behead our husbands let's not behead the men by what we are doing not being submissive but let's allow them to have the to to make sure that their role is well played as we stay in our lane the men stay in their lane then the family's uh, unit will be perfect i would like to add something jamata or um, pastor what uh, most uh, people are overlooking pane mama 
my natural instincts can do, I don't know how to explain them. Uh, Pastor Miles Monroe, I can explain it very well. Can I mention what you're saying? Can I pass the Miles Monroe? It depends on who's who. The Karum is no go, no attractive. Who are cards? The one is who's no go attractive. Karum, Karum being humble, no go is sexy. Can I murum cards? The are humble. It's super sexy. It's sexy to put a man at the beginning by 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 beach. That's why you're not. I'm not condoning one. We're going to do that. I'm not asking you about that. But to get the worldwide there is always a problem you a number of men they end up it's not a good thing but the secret behind is but it, by nature, by nature, it's sexy. That's why Pastor Miles Mundo, I'm going to tell you, three is not your duty one, our room. Top three, number one, it's sex. Number two, it's respect. And our room, we translate respect as love. You know, it's a human nature. As you know, as you know, that's the 21st century. That's a change. It's a change. Human nature, it's always primitive. I change. So, to me, to one, I'm going to look down upon. But I know my language is of love, so I've forgotten to manga it. And being saved, so you know what I'm talking So you not even go a kazi. Murume aga batsera batsera mkazi. Mkazi anu to pesa to attract to that guy. It's a language of love. So you know, you know, God said it rule out certain things because of technology, because of time, 21st century. To tell you, I'm glad no party zero. No matter TV, it my TV schedules they are called programs. Because they program your mind. And it's as in your brain. And the whole funga, the whole funga, but the eyes come. Brain magone allowed. Certain things as we change. Humility is sex for women. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm. I. I am mindful of our time. Uh, I don't know if anyone is feeling pressed to say anything else before we close. Yes. Just to say, men, it's time to stand up. That's all. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Magda, are you here? I'm here. Um, just last word, honestly, is just finding the balance. Um, that's all I'll say. Finding the balance in not necessarily staying in our own lanes, but as in being inquisitive enough and, and yearn enough to understand the males and the females and having that balance. And like you say, respect is the key thing. I don't think, well, I'll speak for myself. It's not only in the sense of men. I think everybody should have respect for each other. So thank you for your book, Mr. Mkundu. I will continue and soldier on. <laughs> Thank you, my and, and really learn so much as what Antimimi said. I felt the same way. I looked at certain things and I said, okay, I could do this better, um, you know, as a woman towards the male figures in my life and vice versa. So, yes, thank you very much. And uh, like one fact, even you, even after you disagree with certain points, you were, in, you were mature enough to to use your logic, not your emotions. Because uh, I remember speaking to Auntie Mimi, we need a discussion that uh, make sure you choose people who uh, have my emotions on the logic. Because there are a lot of people who, you know, there are you know, the hominem, the psychologists say, you know, 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 I will move away from the topic of that personal mind. So um, I've entered a number of uh, debates and Zagat Aros and I told Canada. Ah, even if you remember first time, we particularly the first one, yeah, you were saying you wanted to bring in somebody. And that, ah, no, the God was saying, and I suppose I'm afraid of such people. Mm. But to, to be fair, Mr. Mukundu, your book uh, addresses a lot of issues that uh, actually need. Uh, it's like they are pertinent to the issues that we are facing. And I've recommended it to a few women to say, just read the event instead of what the mind of a man might be going through. Uh, although it is not easy uh, to bring some ideologies to people, to question people's um, way of life when that change is coming. 
there will always be people who will resist it. But I think you do raise quite uh, interesting points. And for me, I'm, I'm a person that likes to learn. So I was writing notes. I was writing notes. And I thought, you know what? This book is going to make me write notes and write notes. But thank you very much for your book. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I also uh, I admit that uh, it's not everybody who is going to agree with me. But uh, I think everybody should uh, act like my academics. Which even when you're going to point, you have, it's healthy to go the other side. Even when you're going to you can learn one or two things. Yeah. In Zimbabwe, Mr. Mkundu. Mm. Are, are, you, are you in Zimbabwe? Are you based yeah, in Zimbabwe? Yeah, yeah. I'm in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Yeah. I, will, I always go out, but no guarantee. That's, that, that's why you talk of academics who should read that. In this country, things are changing. In this country, academia is, has now been subverted to the culture of feelings. So certain ideas yeah. were actually being shielded from them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm well traveled. <laughs> I'm all, always all around the world. So, uh, what you're saying is I'm very quite away with the, right now, even my. My free speech church, Yabuto, Yabuto Nitsa, with uh, was the other time, Pane, it took Yadai to Papa York University. Yabai don't go to about my main issues like my high suicide rates and so forth. Yabuto Nitsa, it's hate speech, Papa, it was saying a petition, Beto, Beto Pano. What's her name? Germaine Greer, that feminist woman, she's actually been banned from universities. That tells you how bad things have gotten. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, things have gone bad. Who would have thought that they would ban her? But yeah, apparently she's considered offensive now as well. <laughs> Who is that? Jermaine Gray, the okay. radical feminist. Yeah, she is mm. now because, um, well, she's making a stand that only women are women. You know, we live in an age where we're being told that if you want, you can also be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one I'm watching it closely. And I know the Jordan Peterson, Pato Senway petition. Jordan Peterson is a professor of psychology by yeah. the University of Toronto. Part of the petition is when the Adzingwe Basa after Aramba Kuni Grima who pronounced one as Zin and as Eva, our good origin, my anonymous machine, my transgender. Yes, my are, them and, and, and he, she, and them, them. Yeah. them. I, think, I think that's <laughs> why feminists should come up, Manji, and fight. Because you know what's happening, Manji? Hey, no, I suppose I think I think there's going to be feminists are fighting. Death, there is going to be the death of women's sports because right now Munaganazor on a body should be obviously on average and very stronger and faster than Wakaz. So I find the Wakaz is wrong become a sports no matter transgender because the Agazor in a male's male men's body was not going to change later on, but as we change with Murume or body searches by police. If if I if I say I'm a woman. You know, I'm a and I'm a police officer. I'm a body search because. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'm telling you, 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 i am telling so let's be careful. My mind is taken with the one Zina and Zay for Tukumu. I think I just want to take this uh, opportunity uh, to thank Ear Ground and to thank Plot Marco for driving this program. Thank you so much. Uh, Plot, um, thank you very, very much. I think you.